Okay, so this may sound a little weird for those of you who didn't grow up with this, so let me put it to you this way. Sonic 3 was its own game, and Sonic and Knuckles was its own game. But when you added them together, it made a double game. So we're going to look at this super game as most considered it the best option of the three. Long story short, the original concept behind Sonic 3 was so big memory-wise it had to be split up on two separate carts, which could be snapped together to make Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Lock on technology, baby. Yeah, confused? Yeah, just think of it like DLC of today, just way more expensive. Alright, so what do you need to know about 3 and Knuckles that wasn't in the previous Sonic games? Well, you got three new power-ups to play with. Bubble, Fire, and Lightning. Which one was your favorite? Probably Lightning, although they all had their own redeeming qualities. The levels were ridiculously long. Now, if you remember in Sonic 1 and 2, you could just breeze through the levels in like 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, not right here. No, no. Tails is still a dumbass. Just look at him. You need to get destroyed. So good. But at least you can make him fly now. And of course, there's the whole Michael Jackson scoring the game thing, which is cool. But probably one of my favorite things about Sonic 3 and Knuckles is the game plays like one giant ass level. Once you complete a part, you just keep on going. It makes you feel like you're just part of something way bigger. The big key addition, though, is obviously Knuckles, who is a red echidna. Which, along with the Boomer Kwanger from Mega Man X, may be the most questionable decision for the use of an animal in video game history. Anyways, dude can float and climb up walls, and that's all good, but initially you think he's the big doucher, but it turns out he was duped by Dr. Robotnik into being a bad guy, and was actually a good guy. You can also play as him and fight against trickier bosses. In the Sonic CD Vault, we talked about Amy being the leak in the foundation that opened the shitty character floodgates. Oh, but this fucker, he was so popular, Sega felt the need to reproduce him 17 more times with color palette swaps. Okay, one last thing before we wrap up. Apparently, I'm the only person in the entire world that can recognize that Sonic looks totally different in this game than he did in 1, 2, and CD. I mean, look! He's kind of chubby and his blue is not the same. But did anyone complain when Sonic 3 was released? Well, if they did, I never heard it. It was just the evolution of the character. It didn't slow him down or make the game any worse. The moral of this story? Fanboys? Shut the fuck up. The end.